Welcome back and thank you very much for staying with us. Now let's get to our interview for tonight. We're speaking with the National Chairman of All Progressive Grand Alliance, APGA, Superstar Ezil Kewa. Tonight to focus on APGA and the Torso for Leadership. He is the youngest National Party Chairman in Nigeria at 38. Barrister, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. I am Bye. quite elated to be here. Thank you. It's so good to see you again. I mean, it's interesting that uh, your party, Abga, has always been enmeshed in leadership tosser. But with your emergence, I mean, people thought things would go differently. But alas, we're here again. Before we get to that, how has the journey been? You emerged as the youngest national chairman of any political party in Nigeria at that convention in May. How has it been? Well, I, I must confess it's been quite some daunting journey uh you know <clears throat> in this part of the world um uh, the people are not yet accustomed to you know um, opportunities like this where you have a young person you know of my age uh, being elected the national chairman of a political party if i most times when they see you they'll be like ah you're the national chairman wow i i, I think i think uh maybe we we'll have to look at apga there's something apga is getting right so uh, it's, it's been some sort of bumpy ride, but so far so good. Uh, I can tell you that uh, with the policies, we've tried as much as possible to put on, tried as much as possible to put a face to the party, trying as much as possible to you know, have some overhaul of the ideology of the party. What does the party really stand for? You know? mm -hmm. And then looking at, like I always say, looking at the, um, the pattern of voting that we saw from the last general election, the increased participation of young persons, you know, in that election shows that there is an increased awareness by people, at least I think um, from the demographics we saw, the statistics we saw, uh, we are looking at about 50-something percent of young persons having actually voted at that election. And APGA as a political party, the National Convention, the delegate at the National Convention decided that this is the best time for us to hand over the reins of leadership in the party to a young person who can move the party a step forward. And that's what we've been doing. Hmm. But six months after taking over leadership of, of APGA, how united will you describe it? Well, um, you know, we've always maintained one thing. I've always maintained one thing. When you talk about factionalization of a political party, you know, it, 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 it has to be some sort of division in the leadership from inside the party. And that's why I find it quite perplexing when people come out and say that APGA is factionalized. APGA is a united political party. The people who you call factions of the party are outsiders who are unknown to the party. They are not members of the party. A political party, the Supreme Court has said in a number of authorities that if you want to know the members of a party, you get the membership register of the party. And it's only a political party that knows who its members are. So when you see someone running around from one court to the other, trying to get one judgment or one order or the other, for him to be coronated and announced as national chairman, then you know that there is something wrong. Definitely, by Supreme Court decision in Sheriff and Makarafi, the Supreme Court made it very clear that you can only emerge the national chairman or national executive or leadership of a political party at a properly conducted national convention. Or if you want to be the executive of a political party, it must be through the instrumentality of a Congress duly monitored by INEC. So when these things are absent, then you ask me what rationale or what legitimacy does that person have trying to claim recognition as a national chairman or even as any officer of the political party. So I say it quite clearly. APGA is a united political party. We had our congresses just in May from the world congresses crystallized to the Local government congresses, from the local government congresses, you came up to the state congresses in the third six states of the federation, including the FCT, which ultimately culminated in the National Convention of 31st May 2023. And I can, I can tell you that all the officers of the party elected at those congresses and at the National Convention are discharging the functions of their office or their respective offices in line with the concern of APGA. All right. So before we go deeper into what exactly the issues are, you anchored your mandate on five core principles 
Uh, you talked about visibility, yes. uh, reposition, yes. uh, inclusiveness, discipline. How is that going as well? Very well. You know, like I said earlier on, I remember when I was here the last time, I did um, reiterate uh, the fact that uh, we um, developed um, uh, an aphorism, so to speak, uh, what we call the drive principle. Because, you know, before my election as a national chairman, I was actually a national officer of APGA, and um, actually I was the national legal advisor of APGA. And so I know a thing or two about the party. I know probably some areas where I know the party was lacking. One thing I found out clearly was the serious case of indiscipline, where you see probably before primary election, you know, we have aspirants as, you know, trying as much as possible to vie to be elected the party's candidate at the primary election. Ordinarily, at the end of the primaries, everybody, irrespective of the camp you belong to, once the candidate of the party emerges, there is that um, expectation that everybody unites together behind the candidate of the party to make sure that that candidate emerges successfully at the election. But if I know that in some instances, because of the deep uh, attachment to one aspirant or the other, when a candidate emerges, you find out that some persons try to come up to sabotage that, uh, that candidate from emerging successful at the election. And for me, that was a gross case of indiscipline. And that's why I decided that we now evolved the drive agenda, which anchors on five key principles of discipline, reposition and rebrand the party, inclusive leadership, visibility, and then expansion. Expansion in the sense that APGA, when we mention APGA, people just say, oh, it's just this party from the South. No, 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 no. APGA is a national party, and we're trying to give the party a national outlook. And that's why we are very seriously committed in the expansion program of the party, trying to, of course, have a handshake across our brothers in other regions, people from the Southwest, people from the North Central, the North East, the Northwest. I was the, I'm, I, I, as I speak to you, I'm the first national chairman to visit the, the party outside of the southeast have gone to some states in the northeast have gone to some states in the northwest trying as much as possible to talk to the newly elected executives of the party in those states i've been to benue i've been to bauchi state when you talk to them you try to explain you know why you're on board at this time and why we should all come together at this point in time rally around the party and make sure that we, if it's possible you know, Abga is a political party. We're talking about having a shot at the leadership of this country. And I see no reason why we shouldn't do that. Or even if we cannot do that, then we can find a way to probably go into some sort of alignment with, you know, well, subject to the discussions around the national or the national executive committee of the party. But I know that as time goes on, we can truly build Abga into one truly progressive united political party in Nigeria. All right, so let's now uh, get into the issues and why Abga has remained in perennial crisis. Uh, a few days ago, uh, Edo Zainjoku called on INEC to obey a court order and recognize him as Abga national chairman. Why is this matter still unresolved? <laughs> well, <laughs> I can say that I'm as surprised as you are uh, because when you make some call, you know, a call may be based on actual situation or factual situation, or it may be born out of just sheer mischief. And I'm, 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 I'm bound to agree that uh, that call is born out of nothing but sheer mischief. It is expected that when there is a judgment of court for whatever reason, and that judgment is on appeal, appeal duly entered and applications pending before the court of appeal, as a legal practitioner, I know that the neat thing to do is for the court, the lower court, to hands off and await the decision of the Court of Appeal in that regard. Now, All right. coming to the issue at hand, of course, I know he has been claiming that uh, a high court in FCT, um, one Honorable Justice um, 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 Madugu, according to him, asked INEC to recognize him as a national chairman. But I can tell you, I have the judgment of Honorable Justice M.A. Madugu here. And there is absolutely nothing. In fact, even the man in question, Chivedozi Njoku, was not even a party to the proceedings before the court. But I'll give you a background history of all these things, like I always say in other places or other fora that have appeared. 
If you recall, sometime in 2021, the Supreme Court delivered judgment, you know, and that judgment or that appeal arose from the decision of the Court of Appeal, Kano, in 2021, when some persons traveled all the way to Jigawa to get judgment pronouncing some other person, one uh, Mr. Judo Keke, then uh, as the acting national chairman of APGA. When that judgment came, of course, the national chairman then, Chief Victoria, was not even joined as a party in the proceedings before the court. And APGA, the political party whom you sought to replace its national chairman, was not even made a party. So, naturally, Chief Victoria sought the leave of the Court of Appeal and was joined as a party interested and allowed to appeal that judgment of Jigawa High Court. And in the course of the judgment of the Court of Appeal, Kanu, the Honorable, the presiding justice there, sorry, the, 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 the Honorable Justice that presided was equally the person that delivered the lead judgment in that case. And he made it very clear that by an extant judgment of the Anambra State High Court, that Chief Victor Oye was the national chairman of APGA. Therefore, it was wrong for the High Court in Jigawa to have proceeded to hear that matter without having him as a party. And based on that, the court set aside the proceedings on grounds of lack of fair hearing amidst other grounds. Of course, one of them was the fact that even by the claim before the court, there was nothing that conferred territorial jurisdiction on the High Court of Jigawa because it was the High Court of Jigawa State, not even the Federal High Court. Now, they further appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court affirmed the decision of the Court of Appeal, including the finding that Oye remained the national chairman of APGA. So that was what happened. Then subsequently, sometime last year, because this judgment, I think it was delivered sometime in October 2021. Sometime last year, in 2022, uh, this man now, Dozi Njoku, started parading a doctor judgment of the Supreme Court, which he claimed, corrected, uh, removed Oye as a second respondent on record at the Supreme Court, and that the Supreme Court now replaced Oye with his name. And of course, anybody, any legal practitioner, is a very elementary principle of law that the only way a party on record in the proceedings before a court can cease to be a party is if there is an application for such a party's name to be struck out. And there was no such application. What still, at the Supreme Court, the same Edozian Joku brought an application for joinder to be joined as a respondent. And the Court of Appeal, the, sorry, the Supreme Court refused the application and said, that in view of the judgment, that the application has been overtaken by event. Because ultimately, the judgment of the Supreme Court in that regard was that the lower court lacked jurisdiction to entertain the case had been issued. That was what happened. And so we were surprised when we saw that judgment. INEC were represented. Of course, they were a prior parties to the appeal, and they were represented. And they knew who the parties on record were. So INEC said, no, there was never a time your name was even a party or a respondent on record before the Supreme Court. The next thing, the party then, of course, wrote a petition to the police and he was invited and questioned and then indicted, which led to his arraignment before, incidentally and quite surprisingly, before the same judge, Honorable Justice Madugu, he's standing, I think, about 20 something count charges bordering on forgery of the Supreme Court judgment. Thereafter, he filed an application before the Supreme Court claiming that there was an error in the Supreme Court judgment. And I must admit, there was actually an error because in the course of review of the background facts that led to the judgment or that led to the decision of the suit in Jigawa, the Supreme Court, in the course of the review of the background fact, mentioned the name of Oye because the person who was claimed to have been removed in Jigawa was Edozi Njoku. Meanwhile, he was never the national chairman. So it was as if someone came to court, alleged some set of facts without proof. So the Supreme Court said, yes, we agree with you. Oye's name was never mentioned because you recall, it was because Oye's name was not mentioned that he brought an application seeking the leave of the Court of Appeal to appeal that judgment as a party interested. So the Supreme Court said, well, for whatever it is, what it was a clerical error, what we call an accidental slip, and that the court has the inherent powers even without an app, any application, even in chambers, to correct a slip in judgment. That was what happened. All right. So, uh, basically... Yes. So, so, that, so, so, uh, sorry, right. so I'm, basically, I'm just having issues with my... 
It's okay. So basically, uh, this recent crisis is a continuation of the tussle he had with uh, Victor Oye. But then, how worried are you and uh, your supporters on your features that this matter has become intractable? You know, like I said earlier on, for some persons, it's just sheer mischief. We are not perturbed at all. We are only surprised because the honorable judge that gave the judgment in Buari started harassing the former national chairman and then the INEC chairman. And what is even more surprising, I will tell you, the whole claim by Edozi Njoku, according to him, allegedly centered around the purported national convention of APGA that was held in nowhere. And he has been asked in many fora by section 82 of the Electoral Act, for you to conduct national convention, you must give INEC at least 21 days notice. So if you say you emerged at a national convention, the first thing is provide a copy of the notice you gave to INEC. Incidentally, he admitted that Oye was the national chairman as at 31st of May 2019. So ordinarily, the man who will give INEC notice of the convention was Oye, who was the national chairman. And we brought a copy of the notice that was issued to INEC showing clearly that the national convention was slated to be held at Professor Dora Akunyele, um, 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 Women Development Center in, Anam, in Oka, the capital of Anambra State. So, where did you, when did you give INEC notice? Let us even leave the issue of notice. Is there any proof that INEC came and monitored that convention? Because INEC is a regulatory body constitutionally established to regulate, the activities, regulate and monitor the activities of political parties. So, right, but... where is the report? We showed, we showed them, first of all, the notice issued by OYE, stating the convention of APGA then on the 31st of May 2019. And then we produced a report, which was produced by INEC. INEC, INEC sent a team of monitors led by a then a national commissioner, Professor Antonia Simbine. And they produced the report, clearly showing who the officers of the party that were elected at that national convention were. And up to today, he is yet to answer that question. He's been running around in right. circles. I can tell you categorically, there is no judgment of any court in Nigeria that has pronounced Edozie Njoku, the national chairman of APGA. There is, right. is it's oh, even please. an impossibility. Barrister, Barrister, Njoku said an FCT High Court gave INEC chairman a 14-day ultimatum on the 9th of November to recognize him as national chairman of APGA or risk yes. jail. So my question to you now is, have you been in touch with INEC on this matter? Definitely. One, what he said was a categorical lie. I can tell you that. Like I said earlier on, the judgment of Honorable Justice Madugu is here with me. The court claimed, according to the court, the court said that Oye occupying the office of the national chairman of APGA in contravention, that was, that, was, that was what the court said, in contravention of the judgment of the Supreme Court was wrong. The court even admitted that the Supreme Court did not say who the national chairman was. That was what the court said. What the court said was that by the judgment of the Supreme Court, that the Supreme Court restored the parties to the status quo before the suit commenced. The court even refused to pronounce on what the status quo was. He said the parties know what the status quo was. And we asked, what is the status quo? So it was just a case, I don't know how to put it, as much as possible, and I always say this, I try not to um, use maybe derogatory remarks or disparaging remarks against judicial officers. Uh, of course, as a lawyer, I know that if a judgment is unfavorable to you, of course, I know what to do. The proper channel to use is, of course, to use the appellate procedure file your appeal before the Court of Appeal, and then seek for any relief you want before the Court of Appeal. So I leave him at that. But the fact remains, and that is why INEC, we are very firm with the recognition of myself as National Chairman of APGA. Mm -hmm. After the Supreme Court ruling of 24th March correcting the judgment of the Supreme Court, some cronies or proxies of this same man went to the Federal High Court at Abuja, presided over by Honorable Justice Jacob Motosho, and filed a suit. In that suit, they claimed 
that the Supreme Court has corrected its judgment and demitted Oye as national chairman and replaced him with a dossier in Joku. First, that a dossier in Joku was the person entitled and legally empowered to nominate candidate on behalf of APGA. Let me read a portion of the judgment of Honorable Justice J. Cole Motosho on the issue. He said, I'm just reading page 35, he says, It is clear from the above decisions of the appellate court that the validly elected chairman of the party is Chief Victor Oye. This is the pronouncement of the court and not Chief Edozie Njoko as claimed by the plaintiffs. Contrary to the claim of the plaintiff that the Supreme Court mistakenly put the name of Chief Victor Oye instead of the name of Chief Edozie Njoko, it is apparent to this court that the correction of a slip in a name by the Supreme Court has no effect on the validity of the judgment that confirmed Chief Victor Oye as national chairman of APGA. And then continuing again, please, just, it's very, very important. This is at page 37 of the same judgment. He says, the judgment of the appellate court on the issue of chairmanship of APGA still subsists, and there is no evidence that they have been set aside. Consequently, the Chief Victor Oye led NWC is the authentic committee recognized by law. This same committee is the one authorized to nominate and forward the names of candidates to the first defendant. Now, it says, the plaintiff not being nominated or having their names forwarded by the Chief Victoria led committee cannot be deemed valid candidate of the party for the various elective positions they seek. Concluding, the court said, Chief Edozi Njoku, this is a categorical statement by the court. Chief Edozi Njoku is not recognized as the chairman of APGA and so lacks the powers to forward the names of nominated candidates. This is in black and white. Incidentally, they appealed this judgment to the Court of Appeal, and the Court of Appeal affirmed the judgment of Honorable Justice Omotosho. They left Abuja. Instead of appealing to the Supreme Court, they abandoned the appeal. They left Abuja, they came to Anambra State, and they filed another suit before Honorable Justice H. A. Ngajiwa then of the Federal High Court Orca, seeking the same interpretation of the Supreme Court ruling, claiming that the Supreme Court has recognized Edozie Njoku as national chairman. The court made similar findings and said that by the ruling of the Supreme Court, correcting an accidental slip, that there is no pronouncement by the Supreme Court that Chief Edozie Njoku is a national chairman. That what the Supreme Court held, according to Honorable Justice Ngajiwa, that what the Supreme Court held was that the issues bordering on who the national chairman of the party was at that time fall within the confines of internal affairs of a political party and therefore non-justiciable. That was the decision of the Federal High Court talker. They left All that right. one. They went, back to the, I'm coming, they went back to the Supreme Court and claimed to initiate crime, contempt proceedings against INEC chairman and the then national chairman. Claiming that Supreme Court has pronounced the Dozen Joku National Chairman and that the Supreme Court should allow them to initiate contempt proceedings against the INEC Chairman. The Supreme Court replied their counsel and told them that by the decision of the Supreme Court, that what the Supreme Court held was that the issues in the appeal border on the internal affairs of a political party and that there is no way the Supreme Court could have pronounced a Dozen Joku as National Chairman. They left the Supreme Court. They ran back to Honorable Justice Madugu. Now, all these judgments were brought to the attention of the Honorable Judge, including a valid challenge on the jurisdiction of the Honorable Court to even entertain the suit have been issued, in view of the fact that there have been some positive pronouncements which form what we call issue estoppel with regards to the issue that they subjected before the court. What did the Honorable Judge do? Did he ignored? All the judgments, two federal high court judgments, a pending judgment of a superior court, which by section six of the constitution and in the hierarchy of court, the court was bound to abide by the decision of the court of appeal. And I will even tell you something that is even very surprising and quite shocking. When the honorable judge came out to read the judgment, he was told, because I think he read the judgment on the 6th of June, the Court of Appeal delivered its judgment in respect of the appeal by the same proxies of the same Edozie Njoku on the 2nd of June. Incidentally, the certified true copy was not yet out. He was told that the Court of Appeal has now affirmed the decision of Honorable Justice Omotosho. What did the Honorable Judge do? He said that as far as he's concerned, 
that the judgment of the Supreme Court was not before him. It is clear and an elementary principle that a pronouncement by any court, that a court is bound to take judicial notice of pronouncement by not just courts of coordinate jurisdictions, including superior courts of record. And now, what do you expect INEC do? For INEC to ignore a subsisting judgment of the Court of Appeal to judgment of the Federal High Court and take preference and obey a judgment of an FCT High Court. It's impossible. All right, barrister. And I always draw, and, and uh, sorry, I, 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 before I conclude, I always draw this analogy. And I'll use a recent judgment of the Court of Appeal. Just last week, the Court of Appeal delivered judgment in respect of the Nasarawa Appeal, where they affirmed the, the election of the governor of Nasarawa. And then after that, someone goes to probably the High Court of Akwanga and gets a judgment that so so and so person is not duly elected as governor of Nasarawa State. And you expect INEC, being a party to both proceedings, to ignore the judgment, a subsisting judgment of the Court of Appeal in preference to judgment of a High Court. It's impossible. And that's why yesterday the Court of Appeal granted a stay of proceedings in the contempt charge. In fact, the Court of Appeal descended heavily on the Honorable Judge and said, in view of the fact that you are aware that so-so and so appeal has been entered at the register of the Court of Appeal, records duly transmitted, briefs duly exchanged and filed, pending application for stay of proceedings, that it, were, it amounted to judicial impertinence for the Honorable Judge to have even proceeded or remotely thought of proceeding with the contempt proceedings in that particular case, without due deference to the authority and sanctity of the Court of Appeal. So that's what happened. All right. And I also know that at a point, INEC released a statement on this particular issue, saying it will not succumb to exactly. sentiments, but we will stay on fact and due process. But, but let's take a quick break. Yes. And when we come back, we will continue this conversation. I've been speaking with the National Chairman of All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, Sylvester Ezeok.